Imagine you move from a place where you lived all your life. Imagine you move and you leave all your children and wife. Oh boy. Starting all over again, but no one you know is around. Well, well, they didn't have to imagine. They built it up from the ground. How does it sound? It's not easy because it isn't. Could have raised them, but it didn't. But the Ray Bond, that's a winner. I never ran straight to the finish. You get to know them up close and personal. Wait, just give me a minute. Welcome to the front row. Can I get a drum roll? Intentional, intentional, we may be immigrants, but we are still intentional. We are dependable, it's just a set the bar, but still the best of all, we are intentional. Welcome to the Intentional Immigrants Podcast. My name is Yolanda Jack. Today's guest is Rolando Hammond. Rolando Hammond is a consultant, therapist consultant who helps persons with their mental health. He helps with their anger management. He he provides family counseling and he does try to allow persons or help persons to become a better version of themselves. So let's listen as Rolando tells his story. Just before Rolando tells his story, the Intentional Immigrant Podcast can be found on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, and it is also available on YouTube. You also, oh, I also have an Instagram account, so you can also visit the Intentional Immigrant at the Instagram account, and you could also visit the website www.intentionalimmigrants.com. The aim of the Intentional Immigrants podcast is to inspire, motivate, and encourage everyone but in particular immigrants, those who are thinking of coming or those who are already here, who just need a little push start to help them, as Rolanda says, to become a better version of themselves. So we are all about empowering the immigrant. Let's listen as Rolanda tells his story. Hi, Rolando. Welcome to the Intentional Immigrants Podcast. I'm happy that you're able to meet me here today and just spend a little time with us as you share your story. Thank you for having me, Rolando. It's, it's indeed, I'm, I'm really happy to be here and I, I look forward to this conversation. Okay, thank you. All right, Rolando, take us a little through your journey. Where do you reside presently and... How long ago did you migrate? Right now I'm residing in, in the province of, of Alberta, which is one of the western provinces here in Canada. I migrated approximately around about 11 years ago, okay. um, uh, uh, coming on to 12 years ago when I migrated uh, from, from Jamaica. Okay. Uh, what was the cause for the migration? Why did you decide to come abroad? It's a good question. Well, I finished my first degree in Jamaica and it was about two years I was also trying to find, you know, um, stable employment mm -hmm. and it wasn't forthcoming because my field of study in my first degree was, was, was theology mm -hmm. and uh, the market, either the market was flooded or the market didn't find much favor in me, something of the sort. But I wasn't getting picked up, and uh, back then I still uh, have very good friends of mine now today. They mm -hmm. kind of said to me, "Hey, Rolando, uh, you can you can continue your educational quests. You know there are programs offering overseas that you can seek to access." And I said, "Hey, that sounds like a good idea." Mm -hmm. And so I I applied to do uh, my my second degree, my Master of Arts, and I got accepted and. And after that, I migrated with my, my one carry-on and uh, whatever finances I had, measly amount, and I came to Canada to study. Okay, okay, cool. 
Have you had the chance to go back to Jamaica? Yes, I, I went back to Jamaica uh, just before the pandemic. That's around about, this is 22, I think I went back to Jamaica in 2019. Okay. You know, I went down for my my daughter's graduation because I, I have a daughter who still lives in Jamaica and she mm -hmm. was graduating. So I went and participated in that. Uh, it, was, it was quite good to see and touch my feet on the soil uh, of Jamaica again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What most? What do you miss most about Jamaica? Sunshine. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know the, 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 the weather. The weather here in Alberta it can be very, very uh, frigid. Yeah. Not very. <laughs> It's not very user friendly. The weather and, and, and the food, as well as you know, the people and you know, being closer to family is always a good thing. Yeah. So um, those are some of the things that I definitely do miss. Okay. What activity would you recommend to somebody to a visitor who decides to go to Jamaica? That is a must see, must have, or must experience. I'm going to be very biased now, in mm -hmm. I think uh, the Dungeon of Falls is still a very beautiful attraction in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a falls that just being there, it's, it's a very cool, calm, nice experience climbing and experience and, and just uh, allowing yourself to have that nice water that is not freezing cold <laughs> run on your body. You know, it offers it offers its, its therapy. And then there are places there that, you know, you go and get really good food. For example, I, I talk about stopping by uh, on your drive up to Mandeville where they, they, they have um, roast yams and salt fish and, and all that stuff. Just amazing. And back then, I haven't been here for a while. They had places like Little Ochi where you get the greatest fish to eat. I heard that it's not as beautiful as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, there, there are other places back home where you can always go and find good food and uh, just beautiful experience. Visiting Bob Marley Museum, for example, you know, going to Devon House to get like the best ice cream you can imagine. Those things are always a win for me. Always a win for you. All right. So what product or service do you offer? Well, right now I'm... I've been a, a therapist now for a number of years. It's been what I've done from I've been here. So right now I offer um, counseling um, for anxiety, depression, couples counseling, addictions, and mental health supports. And I also offer life coaching for men. I'm a uh, full-time, I provide life coaching for men. And so like the brand you're seeing, my shirt over my shoulder, the XY spark, is a space where I promote holistic health and masculinity for men. I have um, a YouTube channel where I offer daily motivation for men, podcasting, where I offer programs specific for men who are seeking to find themselves. I offer services, especially for men who may be struggling with self-sabotaging behaviors, men who are trying to improve relationships you know both personally and professionally and yeah, I spend a lot of time offering uh counseling support to the community so I do family counseling as well couples individuals and so I've been uh, fully engrossed in that I do workshops in the form of anger management stress management I offer domestic violence counseling and coaching for those who are victims of domestic violence or for even those who were perpetrators because the idea is to uh, really help persons to uh, rediscover or discover uh, healthier ways that they can live their lives so that's that's what I spend my time doing right now okay <clears throat> question for you what what gave rise to this passion that focuses it's not wholly on men, but 
I think that's a particular segment that you're trying to serve. What gave rise to this particular passion of yours? Well, this is something that I did even before I came into Canada. I used to do this in and around Jamaica, in the urban and rural communities. Mm -hmm. I used to work with families, doing a lot of counseling, one-on-one. -on -one. And so when I heard the, 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 the call to migrate to become more savvy, you know, and to sort of build my skill set in offering uh, more services to the family that's more holistic, you mm -hmm. know, because back then I did it basically in one area, which is a spiritual emphasis. So migrating to Canada, I gained more insight how to offer both spiritual, psychological, social, and, uh, you know, um, physical supports that helps to set persons up for success. So the passion for this work started two decades ago, actually. Yeah. Okay. All right. How long has your business been in operation? It's XY Spark, right? Yeah, XY Spark is actually the 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 baby of therapeutic interventions, uh, psychotherapy services. XY Spark was born out of therapeutic interventions because as I continue to offer supports to families and individuals, I recognized that there was a huge need for a safe space to be provided for men, you know, uh, having that voice. And one of the things I've noticed here in North America is judicially and even the legal, judici judicially, you know, and otherwise, men are sort of marginalized and they're expected to fulfill a certain societal norm. Mm -hmm. And so they, they don't have that space to, to be human and to work things through and to have an ear, someone who can hear them. So I've definitely dedicated my, my life to becoming that, that ear and preparing that space where men can come and just be human. Okay. Share, share an experience share an experience that blew you away in terms of the impact of your product or so in your case it's a service do you have physical products it's a service most a service mm -hmm. okay and uh, there's so many stories you know i'll just speak of one specific where i remember one particular uh client said to me you know rolando you know i'm so glad that you i met you and i'm so glad that I, I found a counselor like you because you have helped me to regain, to win my family back. You have helped my, my family life to change. And, you know, when I heard that, it was, it was really, really empowering for me as a therapist to hear someone say, because I got in contact with you, Rolando, my life changed, my family life improved. And, you know, that's why I love what I do and I wouldn't exchange it for anything because it's just powerful that you're able to give back to the community and change lives and hear people say, you know, with, with no form of flattery, but saying it from a place of genuineness and sincerity that the interaction, the service that you provided was exactly what I was looking for. So that was the thing for me that really, yeah, say it blow me up, blew me out of the water, so to speak. That's, good. That's very good. Share a difficulty and the lessons learned as a result of that experience. You know, that's, that's an interesting question, Yolanda, because when you see a difficulty, what exactly um, do you mean? Uh, whether as an international student, whether as in counseling or in your current experience, or whether you want to share, it's a difficulty that would have been life-changing for you. Okay. So one of the difficulties I can, you know, I can say that I've experienced 
I've experienced racial discrimination here in Canada in more than one occasions. Mm -hmm. I've I've experienced it uh, in university when I did my master's. But the way it was done, if you're not paying attention, you wouldn't know that that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. I've experienced it here in Canada, uh, whereby I got employed to work uh, for a certain company here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And because I was an immigrant, I got hired. I went to my, I went to my, uh, what you call, uh, I'm forgetting I have a, I'm having a brain freeze, but I went to work the first day where I was being enrolled, you know, orientation, orientation. thank mm -hmm. you, Yolanda. And after one hour, when I presented my letter from immigration to the then manager of the company, mm -hmm. uh, he was told by HR that a legal document that was coming from the the government of Canada does not suffice. And so after one hour, uh, they told me that we can't keep you. Wow. Okay. And so I got hired and terminated one hour the same wow. day, all because, um, and I even today I still say this HR person for this company, and I, I don't want to be calling out the company's name because yeah, you I, can't would, do that. I, I was really shocked to see that a company of, with that caliber had people who were working in their HR who mm. were so ignorant to the process, mm. you know? And even the week after that, I got the, the concrete that they say I needed to have. And I called back and they said, we're sorry, we already gave the position to somebody else. So that was one thing. The well, second thing that I was in the university. Yeah, it was sad. It was a huge lesson learning for me. Mm -hmm. I was in university. I got, I was going towards graduation here in Canada. And uh, I was, I was doing well, I must say, thank God. And mm -hmm. I was deserving of a scholarship. And when I went and inquired about the scholarship, the university said to me, well, that scholarship, you, 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 you were only supposed to get it if you're in your last year. And I mm -hmm. said, actually, no, that's not what the letter said when I got accepted. Mm -hmm. and, um, when I showed them my letter, they they weren't responding to it because they're saying no, that letter is not is not correct. And I'm telling you that that's one time in my life when I think I experienced a depression that I could not explain, because here is this universe telling me that even though you have a letter from us with our stamp, um, mm -hmm. you you don't deserve to get that scholarship. And, you know, I'm a guy who I believe in prayer. And I prayed so hard. And it's so ironic that the university, what they did is there wasn't any real apology, but they said, you know, Orlando, think we made a mistake. You know, um, we'll apply the scholarship to you. Um, and it's kind of like good luck. And that was it. Once again, I was shocked to see that a university of that caliber would just say, hey, we don't owe you an apology. We don't need to say anything to you, whatever. Here you go, move on, you know? So I've, I've seen it happen and I wasn't ignorant to it that that's what was happening, but I used it as a stepping stone and I, I got out of there and never looked back. And, and so um, those were two things for me that it could have gone either way. Um, and if I were to tell you my story about the process whereby I moved from being an immigrant to a resident. That's another story that could take the rest of your program, Yolanda. But that was just a real ugly experience that I went through. I was I was scammed by so-called immigration lawyers, you know, Whoa. gave them thousands of dollars, um, you know, and that happened to my wife and I. And, you know, but so many things happened you know, applied for residency, uh, was turned down, went under the, the, the points program that they had, was turned down, had all my work experience, had no criminal record, but, you know, eventually I'm here still, all that passed, but I've had some really interesting journeys that took me to places that were dark and discouraging, but mm -hmm. I, I stuck, I stuck to it. I stuck to it. Okay, okay. 
Can I ask what was the value of that scholarship? The scholarship back then was a little over $2,500. Okay, that's a lot of money, even, even by today's standards. It's a lot, man. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. Of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. <clears throat> What's your personal philosophy or mantra? My personal philosophy, uh, there, there is one that I, I took with me for years now. Sometimes even my, my oldest son would say it back to me when I was in university. I run into this quote from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, he said this, he said, the heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they okay, were well, the companions slept. Sure. We're toiling onward through the night. And I, I never forgot that quote. And for me, my personal mantra is personal development is not an event. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so every single day, I seek to ask myself the question, what do I need today to be the best version of me? And that, that's the way that I seek to live my life as I continue this journey, this path. Okay. Thank you. Share a morning routine or ritual which has helped you well. My morning routine is one that I consider to be interesting. You know, I'm, you know, as soon as I open my eyes, I'm doing my meditation, my prayer. I'm, I'm taking at least a 15 or 20 minute warm slash cold shower in the morning. And then I see to sit around sometimes and I just listen to spiritual songs or I'll spend a 15, 20 minutes on my treadmill when I have the time. And, uh, you know, I seek to sit down most mornings and I will read or, or write something or I would seek to create something, you know, and I try to do that early in the morning because I find early morning is when those um, creative juices are flowing. Going for you. Okay, Ooh. that's good. Recommend a must-read book. So that's a book that you have read or are reading, which you think is worthy of my listeners. You know, I I, I fell in love with I fell in love with John Maxwell's book. John Maxwell has a book called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Okay. And uh, after I read that book, I actually did an entire series on my own podcast from Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of, of Growth. And one of the quotes in that book that really jumped out at me was from Dr. Uh, David McKellen. David McKellen, he, he, um, Maxwell referred to a quote that McKellen had in his book where, where Maxwell, where McKellen said rather, and I'm quoting now that the people that we hang out with the most, they become our reference group and they determine as much as 95% of our failure or success in life. And, and, and when I saw that quote, I said David McClellan uh, was so right because in my own life experience, you know, I've recognized that unless I had made the huge steps that I made in my life to change some of my associations, I definitely would have experienced a different path. Outcome. Yeah. You'd have experienced a different outcome. Okay. So you're recommending the 15 invaluable laws of growth. By John Maxwell. Maxwell. Okay. What tips would you like to share with my listeners. So those are either immigrants who are thinking about coming or persons who are already here. You know, uh, two things I would want to say is if you have a desire to, to migrate, just keep in mind that it's not going to be a walk in the park. Okay. Yeah, you need to be determined. You need to be, you need to have a drive. You need to have some goal. You need to surround yourself with people who are actually able to support you in positive ways. You've got to think about what kind of boundaries you're going to have 
in order to make it through. But if you have a desire to come, I would say, listen, come on in, man. There's room for you. <laughs> There's room at the table. <laughs> There's room. Come on in. Don't, don't be scared, you know, and you will enjoy the cold, quote, unquote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the benefits, the benefits far outweigh the, the negative experiences. And the negative experiences just seek to make you stronger. There's a quote that says, what doesn't kill you, make you stronger. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Yolanda. Mm -hmm. How can my listeners make contact with you? Well, if someone... Before you go on to that, Rolanda. I know you had a march, a men's march or something early yes. this year. Yeah, last year, actually. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> last year. Yes, and that was our first annual march for men's mental health awareness. That was our first march. This year, we're hoping to do it again in the summer. We're hoping for it to be bigger and better. But the march is basically seeking to um, bring more awareness to the reality that men are impacted by mental health as much as women and kids and the elderly. And we want to just um, make our voices heard for more persons in the community to recognize that, hey, men are humans too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Does me contact with you? Well, they can find me on Instagram if anyone wants to. I'm on Instagram. You look for XY Spark. And you'll find me. You can find me on YouTube under XY Spark. I'm also on iTunes on the Podbean app where you find my podcast or you can visit my website, contactxyspark.com uh, and you will see all the information that I do there. Persons can message me, um, email, text, and I'll be more than happy to, to talk with anyone who has any questions uh, that in any way that I can help to support you. So. Those are the ways that you can find me. Email hyman at xyspark.org. And, and, and um, I'll be more than happy to, to connect with anyone. Okay. The, I have one last question before I go. I noticed that your, the name of your company is pretty unique. It is XY Spark. Can I ask what gave rise to that name? Well, you know, uh, I have a good friend of mine. He's, uh, he's in marketing and... Uh, this, this name came about from doing a lot of brainstorming and research. And I say, hey, I need something that identifies men. And you know, the X and the Y chromosome <laughs> is what men, they possess. And the idea that's behind- what makes, That's what makes a, a boy a boy. <laughs> and so the spark is really, if you anyone listens to my podcast, one of my taglines in the end is that we believe there's a spark in you. So the XY spark is thus bringing men to the realization that in spite of where you're at, there's still a spark in there. And so my company, our determination is to connect with you and seek to reignite that spark so that you can become the best version of you. Okay. Rolando, this was great spending some time with you today. It was great to be here, Rolando. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Intentional Immigrants podcast. Rolando Hyman of XY Spark, today's guest. The following persons made today's podcast possible. Rolando Hyman of XY Spark, today's guest. Xavier Anderson for providing music. As usual, I'm your host, Yolanda Jack, reminding you, he who watches the wind will not sow, he who watches the clouds will not reap. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4. You were born for greatness. Step out into your greatness so that mankind can benefit from you being here. So long until next time. Intentional, intentional, we may be immigrants, but we are still intentional. We are dependable, it's just a set the bar.